Greetings and welcome back to Drew's office. Are you tired of drowning in a sea of manual attendance records? Lost in a maze of paperwork? Well, hold on to your spreadsheets as we dive into a smarter way of attendance tracking with the power of Microsoft Excel. We'll have a column for the employee's name. We need a column for the date, and this is gonna be a daily timesheet. We can do some basic formatting on our column headings. We'll have a bold font, a lovely background color, and switch on wrap text. And if we want to see wrap text in action, we can narrow these two columns. When entering the data into our lovely spreadsheet, we want to make it as easy as possible. For this first column, we'll create a drop down list. But the list itself, the employee's names, we'll store that on a separate worksheet. We'll create a little heading. Enter the staff names. It might be a good idea to sort these in alphabetical order. And then, whilst we have them all selected, we can create a named range. Click in the name box give it a name and press enter on our keyboard. And then back on the main worksheet, we'll create a drop down list. The first thing we need to do is select all of these cells on the data tab, click on the data validation. And in here, we can say equals and type the name of our list. With these four columns, they all contain time values. We can choose the time format from this drop down here. When we enter a time and press enter, we're good to go. Now, if we don't want the seconds to be displayed, we can choose a custom format. We'll need to build a formula in this column, but before we do, let's create a little key area over here. Let's keep it simple and have a regular eight hour day and everyone takes a one hour break, just like the good old days. Back inside our table, for this particular column, we're only interested in calculating the regular hours. Any additional hours above eight We'll capture those in the next column. Now we only really want this formula to calculate after these four boxes have been filled out. We'll start with the if function. For the logical test, we can nest the and function. The first condition is this cell here is not blank. The second condition is this cell is not blank. This means all the conditions inside the AND function have to be true before the IF function does the calculation. We need to close the brackets for the AND function back inside the IF function. If the logical test is true, we want to take the clock out time minus the clock in time. Now, if we wrap this inside some brackets, we can minus the break time Then we need a comma. And the final argument for the if function is referring to the logical test. If the logical test is false, essentially, we want a blank to be returned. And we can indicate that by using double quotation marks. Close the brackets for the if function. Now for this first employee, 
we're hoping seven is going to be the answer. And the reason we get this decimal number is when we perform calculations using times, a whole number one represents 24 hours. So 12 hours would be 0 0.5. And if we take seven hours and divide it by 24, we get this lovely 0 0.29 fraction. We can fix this in the formula bar. Each time we subtract a time, we get the answer as a fraction of a whole day. So we need to multiply it by 24, which essentially converts it into hours. Do the same for the break times. And if we highlight the entire value if argument, we can see the result. Now this is what we don't want to happen. If this person did a 12 hour shift, minus their break, we want the regular hours to be eight and the overtime hours to be three. First, we need to amend the formula for the regular hours so that it only calculates the first eight hours. What we can do is use the min function in here and all the min function will do is return the smallest number from all the numbers that we supply. So we can have an eight as the first number, then we need a comma, the second number is our existing calculation close the brackets for the min function and what this means is if someone does an 11 hour shift only the first eight hours are calculated in this column we need a formula to calculate any additional hours outside of the regular hours start with the if function we only want this formula to start if g2 is not empty and then what we can do is use the max function in here the max function will return the highest number from all the numbers that we include and the first number is clock out minus clock in and our 12 hours equate to 0 0.5 of a day we need to multiply it by 24. That gives us 12 hours. Then we need to minus the break time. And then finally, minus eight for the regular hours. But if no hours above eight have been worked, we want zero to be the answer. Close the brackets for the max function. Back inside the if function. If G2 is empty, we want this formula to do nothing or give us a blank. Close the brackets for the if function. The total hours worked is a simple formula. This cell plus this cell. For this column, we'll create another list on the other worksheet. Back inside the main worksheet, select these cells here we want to use data validation point the list to our named range now if we remove all of this data and we want to make the timesheet a bit more lively, we can use conditional formatting to trigger different scenarios. What we could say is, after we've entered a date, we want this cell to highlight. And over here, we'll call it missing entry. And we'll choose this color here. 
create a conditional format for the entire column. Create a new rule using a formula. We can use the AND function, which means all of the conditions need to be true before the conditional format kicks in. We want to select cell B2, and because we want to work our way down the column, we need to take off the second dollar sign. We want the cell to not be empty. Then we need a comma. The second argument is this cell here, but this time we want the cell to be empty. For this column, we want it to highlight only after a clock in time has been entered. Build another formula for the break time. And we want this cell to highlight only after the clock in has been entered. Build a formula for this column. We want the break start to not be empty. We'll create another conditional format to highlight any overtime hours. Apply the formula to this column. Highlight cells that are greater than zero. If somebody works 12 hours or more in a day, we want to highlight those cells in blue. 